So, this convolutional neural networks, right, they are uh, they are again, I mean, you know, this is again a neural network uh, kind of family, except that, right, unlike the other one that we saw till now, which is an MLP, right, there are certain things that change, I mean, when you try to use a CNN. And CNNs have been really good, I mean, in terms of, uh, in terms of, right, what they have been able to achieve and especially, you know, in the, right, imaging domain. So, for example, uh, for example, right, I mean, uh, they have been applied very, very successfully for, in fact, uh, you know, you would have already seen this face, face finding, detection, recognition, uh, right, I mean, uh, then object recognition classification, which you already, right, right from the, right in the, right in the start, we told, uh, we told about this object recognition, then object, uh, locating an object, right, of interest. Then you can even look at you know so the, and then segmentation. All these are all these are going to say classification problems, image segmentation. Then you can think of uh, regression problems also something like denoising, which is which is uh, which is like you know cleaning up an image. You can have deblurring, which is like removing the blur in an image. Then uh, there are even things that actually combine two uh, combine multiple domains. What is called image captioning. Captioning means, right? Give I give you an image, and then and then you need to give us give a sort of a suitable title for it. You need to be able to say what that image contains, right? So that's like both text and so there, right? Uh, you have natural language coming in because you have to express something in terms of words. So the output is not an image, right? In image captioning, the output is no longer an image. Uh, the output is a is a caption. So the caption is like in a text. So you have a visual feature which is the image, and then you have to you have to kind of say come up with some kind of a textual sentence, right? Which says what that what that image contains, right? And uh, and therefore, uh, right. So what happens is all of this is employed CNN. Okay, and uh, and and the and the, and the and the main thing that separates it uh, separates this from the MLP is this word, what is called a convolution. Right. So this convolution is something that that, that completely separates it from uh, right from here from here say MLP, right. And why why is this so? Why is this such an important thing? Right. See, the thing is, first of all, we are all familiar when you do signals and systems. We are we are all familiar with the fact that convolution is such a sort of you know a clean operation, right? So, for example, right. So, let's take an 1D case, right? We'll we'll just we'll just do a motivation. So, for example, I have let's say an impulse response, and then I have an input, uh, whatever, right? So, m, x m, h n minus m, right? So, so when you when you do this, right? So, then what do you do? I mean, so you take let's say h is some kind of an impulse response. Uh, okay, in this case, let's take let's, let's take a finite support, right? Then what do you do? You normally take your take your HFN. You have an you have an input which is uh, which is XFN, and you want to find out right if this input is applied to this impulse response, what will be the output? Right? That's what you do, and that can be expressed in terms of a convolution, provided that this system is linear as well as invariant with respect to time. Otherwise, you cannot write the convolution operation. It's an if and only if, right? If you have convolution, it it implies LTI. LTI implies convolution. Now. Uh, if, you, if you see right, so what do you do? You take your you take your impulse response, then you actually flip it about the axis, and then that's like, uh, and then afterwards you multiply. So if you want your y of zero, what we do, you will simply flip your h of n, and then at that at that instant instant, whatever you kind of see, multiply x and x and h, the flipped h, and then add up all the values. That's what you put as y is zero. Then y one is what you kind of shift your shift your h n by one to the right. Then again, again, right, do the product. This you people know, right? We've all done signals and systems course. Right? That's what you do. But uh, but uh, what do you think is really a, what do, what what is it that that gives it so much structure out there? Because you know that, right? I mean, when you have something like this, I mean, you know. So see, any any kind of a linear system. See, even if this was h of n comma m, I mean, instead of n n minus m, I could still write this as a vector, you know, output as you know a matrix multiplying uh, what is it x. Okay, I can always write this, but then this h begins to acquire a certain property, right? When when you when you replace h of n comma m with h of n minus m, right? I mean, in general you can write no h of n comma m. That means as you keep as you keep shifting the location, h itself keeps changing. But in this case, right, you don't do that. Right? You just shift the h. I mean, you don't change your h. Right? So what what is it? So so this h, right? When you have an LTI system, this h has a particular structure. What is that called? Uh, it, this is not an any old matrix. I mean, right? this is a matrix with a certain structure. What is called a toplet structure? Have you heard of that? Right. So this H has what is called what is called a toplet structure. And depending upon how you how you express it, like in terms of you know, if you write linear convolution in terms of a circular convolution, that means you get a zero pad X and all. Then this H actually acquires a, you know, even better structure. What is called a circular structure. 
okay and then and then 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 the moment right you have things like that a circular structure that is when a fourier sort sort right begins to begins to uh, begins to you know begins to act right i mean you know, do you guys know that uh, the matrix that diagonalizes this h if it is circular it is actually a dft matrix are you guys aware of that see for example i mean if you have a circular matrix so what is what is the circular matrix a b c c a b b c a Right. This is actually a circular matrix. Okay. This is also this will also be um, a, um, a toplets. That means if you look at the main diagonal and the off diagonal entries, they'll all be the same. Okay. And it does not. It does, so a toplet so it does not imply circular, but a circular will always imply toplet, and circular will always square. Now the question is right. A matrix like that, when you want to diagonalize it, right? I mean, diagonalize is something that they keep on encountering. So, and for actually a DFT which you have learnt. Is the matrix that diagonalizes this guy? I mean, that, that that has this unique power to diagonalize a circle and matrix. Okay, and that's how that's how we talk about in signals and systems. Right? We go into the Fourier domain and all that. But now the point is, when you when you talk about a two D convolution, now this is all about one D convolution, which we understand right very well. Now the moment you go to actually two D convolution, now uh, first of all, right, the main thing okay that 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 strikes you here is like I told you, right, where is all this structure coming from? I mean, why is it that we have so much structure and all when you write up? Um, otherwise, that H will not have the structure. If you did not have convolution, you won't have, you will have none of this structure. Uh, but you get that because of the fact that there are actually two things okay which you have enforced. I mean, one is one is actually uh, well, I mean, okay, well, uh, two D, well, uh, the okay, you know, right, hold on, hold on, right. I mean, I'll get us come to that point. So prior to that, let me let me talk about a two D convolution. A 2D convolution is what is good goes along completely the same way, except that I have an image, right, which I want to which I want to convolve with some with some filter. Right, it could be it could be a 3 cross 3, it could be a 5 cross 5. We don't take even filters because then the origin is not clear. Okay, so that's why we always talk about odd filters, 3 cross 3, 5 cross 5, whatever it is that you want, right? And what do you do? We exactly convolve the same way. So only thing is right. If I had a filter, then in 1D I would have flipped about the origin because I had only one axis. But in but in 2D I have actually two axes, right? So so if I have uh, if I have let's say you know something like this, A B C D E F, and then G H I, right? Then the, then the way you would actually flow. So if this is your original H, and if you had to flip it, right? Then uh, then you then whichever way you go, it doesn't matter. You can either flip it vertically or horizontally. If I just flip, flip it, uh, you know, about about vertically, then I'll get like six F I C F I. Then B E F B H guy will remain here, and then A D G will go here. Then I actually flip this horizontally. Okay, then I'll get like uh, then I'll get uh, you know I H G on top. Then F E D here. And CBA here, okay. Whichever way you flip, whether you do horizontally first, or right, that will be the flip filter. And that filter is what is what you would actually apply here. Just the same way that you do 1D, right? You have an image here on which you want to apply the filter. Then what will you do? You will take this, you know, flip filter. You get a center it here, and then again a weighted average, just as you do in 1D, except that this is not done on a 2D grid. Correct. I mean, same thing. No, whatever you do in one D, the same thing you're doing here, except that it's now running on a running on a two D grid. And then, and then you need to suppose suppose right, that's your center of the center. Of, so right, this is called a kernel, or this is called a filter, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Or these are called the weights of your filter, right? And then, and then, and then you get a shift it from here to here. Then the center comes here. Then you again, and then all of this output goes into an output grid, and you store these values, right? So whatever comes out of here, you get as right, you know. Put that here. Then whatever comes of this, you put here, and that's how you get your output. Of course, you know you'll worry what will happen at the border and all that. We will not worry about now. But let's say right, this is how you run your convolution. Now, such convolutions, right, that you do. So typically, right, these kind of filters that you do convolution with. I mean, why would you want to even kind of convolve with an image? I mean, why why would I why would I want to do that? Why do I want to convolve something with an image? What would I get? Let's say. Can somebody tell me why would I even want to convolve? I, mean, I said how you convolve, but why would I even want to convolve? What will I get? One thing is you can get edges out of an image, right? If you have a gradient kind of a filter, I can get edges. I can I can actually I can actually blur an image. Of course, each will require a different kind of kernel, right? Not all filters can do the same job. So so if you if you want an if you want an edge, right? Then maybe okay, you can think about think about a simple filter like this. So 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 right. Maybe you can have one 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 minus one minus one minus one zero 
minus 1 0 0 0 something like this right I mean okay, this will give you give you an x gradient then maybe right you can have a y gradient. So, that way right if you want to look at edges in an image you may use something like this or if you wanted to do blurring right then what will mean is if I have, have 3 cross 3 then I can put all 1s inside and then and, and then you know I can do a 1 by 9 outside if it is 5 by 5 it will do 1 by 25. So, that right that is how you do averaging. A, you can have a different blur, you can have a Gaussian kernel there instead of a uniform kernel, this, this is uniform right all weights are same. Sometimes right you want to give more importance to the middle guy and then and then you have a Gaussian kind of filter. You can have all kinds of filters there right and these are all handcrafted. So, in the sense that uh, well if I want if I want some kind of uh, in, in fact you can even remove the blur with a kernel under certain conditions because that is an inverse problem cannot always do it, but assume that you have even a kernel to remove the blur in an image right. So, all these are like you know, filtering operations which can be ex equivalently expressed in the Fourier domain also, but the point is right these are all filters that we handcraft and you know these are things that we know ok, but what we really want is you know a network that can actually figure out what these filters ought to be and it should actually figure out where what kind of filter should come in come in play ok and, and we do not want to sit and tell what should be that filter. Now, no, no, right. I mean, so, so when I kind of say do the spatial convolution, so, so normally what happens is right. These filters are very small in size. If you look at a CNN, right, these will, this will not typically exceed a seven cross seven size. Okay, your image may be very big. Your image can be, you know, thousand twenty four by thousand twenty four. It doesn't matter. But typically, these filters are not really right that kind of big and all. They, have, I mean, because whatever they can do, they can do with a with a limited support. Now, the, the kind of key thing to notice right when you when you are doing this kind of a spatial convolution are actually you know are actually two things. One is what is called actually locality, ah, one is what is called locality and another is what is called the spatial uh, uh, or let us say uh, weight sharing let us call this weight sharing. Okay, what does that mean? So, right locality means so, for example, right. So, I mean, if you if you had an MLP, right. I mean, you know, you'd have had. Suppose, suppose I'm looking at one neuron and I'm trying to see what all it is seeing at the input. Right? It will see every one of them, right. And then you have weights for all of them. But now, in this case, right. In this case, I mean, you know, if you see, if you see, right. You know, if you see, if you, if you kind of think of the think of the image as, as being a previous output or that's the input to your to your network, and you're kind of looking at what should what should this neuron be seeing. This neuron is actually seeing a very very local region. So just looking at some 7 cross 7 or some 5 cross 5 depending on the filter so it is not seeing the whole image at all right and uh, this actually people have found that you know especially for images this is also to a reasonable extent true for 1D for example even for audio signals right it is not true that you know there is a correlation across our entire time window. Similarly in an image what you generally find is that there is a lot of continuity locally say for example look around you know if you see locally right things will look very similar. Right. I mean if you, look, if, you, if you look at this desk I mean all the intensities around it will all be very similar, but of course things will change as you move, but then very locally if you see right things are very very similar right. So, uh, so one of the arguments that is being made is that do not have to look you know do not have to look everywhere and uh, see this has changed over the years ok. This notion this is how it was built, but later right people felt that you know even looking elsewhere might be actually useful and uh, that is where attention came right. So, people started talking about attention and so on, but that is that is something right that if time permits we will talk about, but right now let us just keep it very simple in the sense that if I just if I just look look at the local interactions if I capture the local interactions that is enough and there is something called a receptive field a, a, a receptive field that means right what does a neuron see how much of an image does a neuron see right you have one layer you have second layer or third layer fourth layer and so on and let us say each time you have a small kernel this filter it is still small. But if you really see effectively what this guy will see is much more than just than just a 3 cross 3, because this guy comes from a 3 cross 3 and each of these guys is seeing a 3 cross 3 neighborhood here and each of these guys is seeing another 3 cross 3. So, effectively what this end neuron will see is actually a fairly bigger part of the image, but then indirectly, but not directly right. A filter do, do you guys see this I mean as you go deeper and deeper if you look at the receptive field is what? The receptive field is like how much of the image does one neuron see. So, right now we are saying it is very local, but it is local if you if you consider the first layer it is only is 3 cross 3. Let me ask you right if I, if I go to the second layer and if it is a 3 cross 3 filter how much of an area will, will that will that neuron in the second layer see of the image? No, how much will it see? It is not square 3 cross 3 and then the next guy will also have a 3 cross 3 kernel right and therefore, how much effectively of the input is that guy seeing 5 cross 5 why because 
see right I mean you guys should should see it like this 1 2 3 4 2 3 4 ok. Now, if you have if you have right one guy ok one neuron here ok. So, so a neuron it will see will see like a kind of a cone ok. So, so it will start from here and this cone right will be like this right. So, so it will it will actually try to see see this area right that is all it sees ok. But then here if you if you see if you see a neighboring neuron see right this neuron sees this what is what does this say neighboring neuron see I mean right neighboring neuron will see will see an area like that right that is what the neighboring neuron will see is it not a guy here will see like this left portion right with center here ok that is what goes there and therefore right a neuron next which is actually taking taking a cone like this what will that see that will effectively see what each guy each of these guys has already seen as the input image that will be phi cross phi right you see that see what this guy will see it looks like it is seeing 3 cross 3 right of the see, previous layer, but then effectively with respect to the input it is seeing 5 cross it is not square ok. So, the point is so a receptive field will actually increase. So, it is not true that you are doing it very locally uh, that is for argument sake, but actually if you have deeper layers then the end neuron will actually see a much larger picture of the of the image, but through all these interactions right it is not direct. Uh, the other thing is weight sharing right. So, when you are doing a convolution right what you are saying is you know all the the the, the filter weights right are not at all changing. Right. So, when I when I go to an adjacent neuron, well, what did we do in MLP right when we changed all the weights right when I, when I went to the next neuron I had a fresh, bun, bu, a fresh bunch of weights, right. but here we are not doing that right. we are just sharing the weights and uh, right, this is something that I will show later through an animation as to what this means, but for the time being right these are the these are the two key things uh, sort of say takeaways are that you have only local interactions right which you are allowing and the second thing is you have uh, weight sharing right that is what is going on. It is actually convolution is exactly that convolution we do not call it weight sharing at all because in convolution we say that the we say that if you if you uh, what do you say I mean you know if you if you shift an input then the output by let us say tau the output will also shift exactly by tau that is that is exactly is what is what is what the impulse response does right. Uh, but instead of calling it impulse response at all we just call it a filter because we do not because there is non linearity at all. So, we do not talk in terms of impulse response at all we simply say it is a filter whose weights are shared and and uh, and a filter that is really local in terms of its spatial support. Okay, you can also argue for all of this in terms of 1D ok, but because we are already into mostly CNNs is for 2D ok. So, we will just we will just go to the go to the image domain right. So, now let me just show you a picture of you know one very famous kind of a network right uh, so that you know so that right, you you kind of get an idea. Mm -hmm.